All right, today we're going to do a painting. Um, this is on my custom wood frame I built here. It's really thin wood and then has nice pine wood backing. So I can use this over and over again. This is a really good way to economize uh, when you're starting out and you're not selling too much of your big work. Uh, once you get later and you start selling a lot of big work, just make pre-made canvas. Don't waste your time with this. But today we're going to just sew a canvas. So wish me luck. So the question of the day is, what is this building behind me? All right, so here we're hanging the uh, canvas. We're gonna tighten it up. Uh, first cut it and then uh, tighten it up before we just so. Oh, one thing about um, cutting the canvas, always cut it yourself. Do, don't tear it. They do that sometimes at the art store and then it goes off crazy directions and you don't get the canvas you want. So if they're ever cutting for you in a canvas art store, make sure they, make sure you measure and it's still like the full yardage you want. All right, the next stage is we've cut the canvas uh, nice and even at the bottom here. And what you wanna do is stretch it out. Start from the middle like you would a kind of a canvas and then pull in the middle here. And then slowly tighten the different edges. You wanna get rid of all these wrinkles like this. This will be terrible to, to just on. The just will pull it a little bit afterwards. But yeah, you wanna get it as tight and as straight as possible. Another thing you want to use is one of these. These are really great. These allow you to um, reuse over and over again with these clamps. Um, don't use pins, you're gonna put holes in the canvas and then at some point it might tear as it's being stretched really tightly um, by a framer, they won't know. So yeah, definitely use one of these. Ah, ow, ow, oh, that hurt. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> All right, so as you can tell, this is really tight. There's no wrinkles here. Um, this is like crease, but this is really nice how you want it this. Sometimes I get a little bit of wrinkles, but this one is just spot on perfect. Now I'm gonna add the gesso. So for my gesso, I like to use um, the Bullock Artist white gesso. Now some people argue, you know, it's better to use like the cheap gesso, and you can use the peachy cheap gesso. But I found is there's a lot of liquid and oil separation in the cheaper gessos, and then it's just be it's just to be a mess. You end up adding more gesso, so you don't really I don't think you're really saving the money because you have to almost triple coat it really thick. And this one you just do two light layers. Um, it does going to cost you almost, you know, 40% more, but it's definitely higher quality and it makes a difference on the gesso background. All right, so we just finished gessoing. I'm gonna add another layer and then we'll start to paint. All right, so today we're gonna to work on, I think architectural abstraction. I'm gonna start in reds and I may contrast with the green. I'm not sure what uh, other contrasting color I'm gonna use yet. All right, so let's run through the color. Cobalt blue, Quinn blue, Quinn red, pearly red, Van Dyke brown, Indian hue, artist gesso, titanium white. Let's get the party started.
All right, we're gonna start our next layer. I'm gonna not put white in yet, I'm gonna put in white a little later, but I'm gonna add a Indian yellow mixed with white, so it's gonna be this nice kind of orangey yellow, but on the light side, so we'll see how it goes. Now I think we're going to add some white lines to kind of break this up before we add the next layer. We got this uh, white layer added. I think now it's time to add some contrasting colors. So I'm gonna add some blues in here and just kind of cover this completely except for a little key highlight. So this would be our highlight layer. Added the blue it's kind of like this crayon blue uh, my dad bought it for me so I'm like oh I better use it <laughs> but I've been trying to make it work um, it's not as beautiful as these two colors so I'm not sure if it's a good color to go on top um, might have to layer this quite a few times to see if it looks good and work out the colors that do look good together uh, this looks really nice here I think uh, this especially looks better than the yellow yellow is always kind of like a punchy color so we'll see where it goes from here, let it dry, see what happens. All right, now I think we're going to bring back in a darker pearly med mixed with um, Van Dyke Brown. So it'll be a richer red. This is really brilliant red, so I want to kind of tame this down, baby, and start you know, dissecting this more, so we'll see where it goes. All right, we just added the blue. It's kind of like this crayon blue. Uh, my dad bought it for me, so I'm like, oh, I better use it. <laughs> But I've been trying to make it work. Um, it's not as beautiful as these two colors, so I'm not sure if it's a good color to go on top. Um, might have to layer this quite a few times to see if it looks good and work out the colors that do look good together. Uh, this looks really nice here, I think. But this especially looks better than the yellow. Yellow is always kind of like a punchy color. So we'll see where it goes from here, let it dry, see what happens. All right, now I think we're gonna bring back in a darker pearly med mixed with um, Van Dyke Brown. So it'll be a richer, red. This is really brilliant red so I want to kind of tame this down maybe 
and start you know, dissecting this more, so we'll see where it goes. complexity and match this yellow so we'll see where it goes from there back here now I'm um, thinking I want to continue the blue but maybe I'm going to do a blue black and then maybe a light blue so we'll see where it goes from there What is this building? This is the Crohn's Conservatory. They have uh, 12,000 butterflies here from Ecuador, so it should be really cool. Um, they rotate it every year what they have in here, but I think they do usually kind of fly insects, right? <laughs> anyway, let's go in and check it out. All right, we just finished the painting, so let's take a closer look. See a little bit of a light issue here, but um, the top it's pretty nice. Uh, I've got these yellows to reds. Light blue, kind of coming green. Um, this over here, over here, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, uh, this should dry more of a purple, so we'll see how it dries. Maybe I'll have to add some stuff. Got some light yellow at the bottom here. Uh, 
We go on the other side. This should also be probably purple. So we'll see how that dries. It's going to be kind of a bluish purple. So we'll see how that looks. And yeah, I think overall it's a pretty solid painting. Um, this time I made it definitely complex enough. The last time I just kind of, I really like that simple look. If it comes out perfect simple, then why add more? Uh, but at the same time, I like this complexity look. I think it's more pretty marketable in a way. Uh, but it's also more interesting because it takes a lot longer to get here. And yeah, I mean, someone could try to copy this, but it'd be such a pain in the butt <laughs> with all the tape and measuring. And, you know, you'd have to have the painting right in front of you to copy it, I think. Um, you can get a rough idea, but yeah, this is kind of a fun style. Um, yeah, and I really like the architectural element in the sense that it's, um, you know, I've always been really good at math, and geometry was one of my loves in high school because it kind of, kind of combines art, um, like pure science in the sense that A equals B or doesn't equal B, or you add three and you get another element. So I have that purity of, you know, math, with geometry, um, so I really like that. So that's kind of my intent behind this. And then we'll have to come up with some crazy name for this, all right? <laughs> all right, hope you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next painting video. Thanks for watching, guys.